Hello! The world of cinematography awaits. Let's get into something that I don't think we have touched on in the, at least in the YouTube version of The Wandering DP. I know that we have done it. Actually, let's make this full screen so we can get a better view of what we're looking at today. Can you guess it? Probably the title is going to give it away. But I don't think we have focused too much time. Is this that music video with Donald Glover? Right? But it's somebody with uh, a rope swing acrobatic act. I love me some Titan tubes, folks. Really good handheld in this as well. This is just all around uh, really nice cinematography. We're probably not going to talk about any of the nice cinematography, right? Because I don't know how to do any of that bit. We're going to talk about the easy bit because I can certainly uh, fill you in on how to make the easy bit easier. Mm, okay, so what are we looking at? It's an Amazon commercial for a spy device. So if you, one of these, if you want one of these things in your house, spying on you and your kids and all of your friends as well, this is the way to do it, right? You want to make it look as good as possible. That really is, the pressure is on you if you're doing one of these commercials because you want to make it feel like nothing's going on here, <laughs> nothing shady, right? It's just helping you. It's not spying on you. Just relax. Anyway, beautiful cinematography. Uh, chances of you going out there and getting this look, there's so many different things going on. You see this and you're like, well, it's a montage ad, so it's kind of easy to get these looks. Like, we could do a whole episode on pretty much every one of these scenes because this is... Uh, really high-level stuff about how shapely it is, about how it's crafted. Uh, I would highly recommend Googling this commercial and watching it in depth because it's fantastically good. We're not going to do any of that, though. We're going to look at one particular thing, which is the product shot. Dun-dun-dun! <laughs> the product shot. Now, uh, these things always take the longest on any schedule. They always require the most amount of time because you will have 5,000 people telling you how this thing is supposed to look, and you have to very nicely agree with them. At the same time, completely ignore them because everyone else has terrible taste. So you're going to have to do it yourself. You're going to have to rely on yourself to be able to do these things. Uh, this is an interesting product to look at because we've got this round little gray orb. It's like the perfect case study in where the light is coming from and what makes it cool because it's a pretty dull object, except for this flashing little blue light, which, by the way, if you think about it, again, not knowing how they did this, if you're actually using one of these things, the only thing you probably can't control the quality of is this. So then you have to base all of your levels off of what you can't control, which is this. I'm not familiar with this particular uh, specific spy device, but I would say that you can dim it somewhat if you're the cinematographer, but you need to, you know, it's within a certain range. And the quality, you need to balance everything to that. First up, like, what, what the, the challenge with any product shot when it's this small, whether it's a beer bottle, whether it's uh, if you're doing like tabletop food stuff, is that it's small, but the temptation is to make things really flat because you want to throw out the background like this, especially with the larger format cameras now, it's so easy to do. The problem is we're trying to fight flatness, right? You're actually going against what you would be thinking would be a positive thing, would be to isolate the subject, but to make it feel not like it's been uh, superimposed on the image or just cookie cut out of... Uh, you know, some VFX job, you, you want to pull in that depth a little bit. So always just having a slight bit of table in there does a good job. It's more the height than anything that leads this line. You can imagine if you come down on the camera, this line starts to disappear. And then you get less and less and less and less depth as you do that. As you rise up, you get a little bit more and so it starts to get flatter and flatter and flatter. So depth is good. What else is good is a mixture. Like this is again, a perfect study in this particular product shot, as opposed to the one we're going to look at in a second, is making everything else besides the product interesting, right? And then being able to pull out the product from the background. So I got all these cool little lights. Imagine if those aren't there and it's just some boring flat wall, you lose all of the interest back there. And although we don't want people looking at all that interest, you can feel it when you're actually looking at this. When you're watching the commercial and paying attention, you're like, oh man, this is... It feels like it's in this world that is interesting. Interesting world, interesting product. People are going to buy more. I guess that's the sales pitch. But we've got this nice, soft top light. Then you feel there's this source coming from the left-hand side. It's like you're not doing anything different. You imagine this is just a human face, right? There's also something coming this way, it feels like. Uh, you're not doing anything different than lighting a human face. It's just the spread and then where it sits on the actual surface that you're going to be playing with. Again, this is also a nice surface. Why? You get those reflections. Reflections are cool. Why? Because just like when you're doing night work and you do a wet down on the street, 
it gives you free level. It gives you free reflections, free, it's bonus depth without any work, except finding the right height, right? Because as you, again, as you come down, what happens, this reflection gets more and more prominent as you come down, this one gets less and less prominent. So it's just finding that right angle and then measuring, you know, finding the distance because this thing is obviously very portable. It's a small little device and you can put this little table anywhere uh, you want. Like all of this stuff has been placed. So you get this nice window in the background. We could be five feet closer. Then you lose all of this. We could be five feet further back. Then that's too far away. Like it sits in a very nice spot. So it's not just about the product because the product lighting is really simple, right? Again, it's just a face, especially something round like this. It's like, okay, we're gonna need a little top light. Let's make that a different color than down here so we can have some color contrast. We're gonna need a little bit of push on the key to just give it a little bit of level across the way, but we don't want it to feel too sourcey. So what do we do? We just make it softer, but we still, we need it all to fit in. So now let's see, we've done that. Let's go to our last product shot, which is here amongst the dancing children. Ba, ba, ba. Here we go. Hugs, kisses. Boom. Man, that is a product shot right there. <laughs> that is nice. You got the nice colored light. Does it make sense? Not really. You got the cool blue and then you got this angle here, just enough of the background sort of in focus to get that we're still in this room. I like these little art decoration pieces as well, even though that's probably, you know, it's not the cinematographer, but it's that communication back and forth around the camera when you're looking at everything. You shout out over to the production designer or the art director like, hey, why don't we just move this here? We get this little stack in the background. And again, not complicated, right? We've got our little bit of ambient uh, key there. We've got our backlight that's colored and then that mixes in with whatever's happening here on the ground plus we're setting it all to the ambient back there really really nice really simple i will say the only bit of advice i would have if you have not done one of these before and i couldn't figure out it's hard to figure out if they're actually doing it in this commercial uh, but normally if you don't have these dancing children in the background what you would do here is because let's roll through it here if we roll frame by frame where does it stop? Right there. Like the end frame is generally the most important frame. And you can imagine how well, you can just look at the image, how shallow the depth of field is here. You're asking a lot of the focus puller to be able to pull this off. So normally what happens is you would run this in reverse, right? So you would start here, then the camera would you stay there for a second, then the camera dollies out. And then for the actual take, you just or for the edit, you just play it in reverse. And then you nail the focus at the end, which is the most important part. Okay, that's the trick. Now, it's hard to do if you have people in the background because you don't know, like, are they actually dancing in reverse? I think they might be. I think if we look at it, definitely feels like some of those dance moves, especially that guy at the end there, the way he's running. I mean, it's so blobby. It feels like it's backwards. Feels like this kid's doing this in reverse. I might be wrong, but again, if you're in a, if you're stuck in a spot and you know, you're going to be this shallow to create this nice looking product shot, uh, it's just a quick trick that you can help people around you. And eventually those people that you help, guess what? They're going to help you probably not with a job, probably not economically, but maybe socially. Uh, if you're nice, if you're not nice, I would still do it because you get to go home earlier because you're actually going to nail focus. So all good things come from doing it in reverse, unless you can see in the background that people are actually walking backwards, then you're probably going to lose your job. Okay, that is going to do it for this episode. We didn't really learn much except with a product shot, like definitely create depth, as much depth as you can all of the time. And uh, it's super easy to light the product, it's harder to light the background. So balance all of the local lights versus what the background is doing, especially if you're lower in budget, If you're lower in budget, that this this takes way less time to light this to these levels than it does to light these levels to this. If that makes sense. If it doesn't make sense, you're in trouble. Okay, that is going to do it. Many thanks, and we will see you in the next one. Goodbye.